The city doesn't particularly want you to see the levers and pulleys behind the scenes, but it doesn't go to great lengths to hide them either. Everybody, after all, knows that Las Vegas is a stage and everybody's moving too fast to care. People go to Las Vegas looking for salvation, you know, there's instant salvation. There's a desire for, for instant gratification, instant, instant life solutions. That's what it's offering. I think what this book is trying to do is more tell you the backstage story. Can you blame a city for all this if you believe people have free wills? I don't know. I know that everything fell apart in my family here within three months. I know that even if you're not familiar with this place, even if you don't know a single person, you can get hold of drugs in minutes. It's open all the time, inviting you to come and wreck yourself. They come here believing that all women in Vegas are essentially available for them, that you'll eventually get what you want from them if you pay enough. You never see the best of men here. It's a city full of men with tan lines where their wedding rings normally are. The marketing of the city gives a man license to be his worst self. I've yet to meet anyone brought here who hasn't been pulled under by it in some way. It's just this minimum wage place where everything bad for you is available 24-7, where everything is about what you can get right now and where no one connects. These are the children of the towel carriers and the cocktail shakers and the wheel spinners that, um, that served the city. They're here to tell the tale and they don't ask to be pitied. They don't ask to be applauded, but they would like to be heard. They want people to understand what it means to, to have those kind of things happen to an innocent person.